Why do you think a single-payer health care system would work in America, given your libertarian views? But obviously, it's not a libertarian approach, right? Um, and it's not a full single-payer approach. So what I said was that we all share in the same risk. There's the genetic lottery risk, right? There's all, all of us have some disease that's in us that's going to pop out at some point in our lives. Um, and then we also face the, the lottery of life risk, right? wrong place, wrong time. And traditionally in this country, when we all have a shared risk that we all face, particularly when there's so much uncertainty, we all tend to, to share in the cost as well. And I think by creating a single payer system just for chronic illnesses and for life threatening illnesses, not everything, right? But, and we do some of that with Medicaid and Medicare already, but just get it out on the table, then I think we can be, you know, I think from a cost perspective, all of a sudden, all the corporate corporations that provide health care, their costs go down dramatically. So that, that's one big benefit. Um, everybody who has that uncertainty of not knowing if something goes really wrong in their family, what they're going to do, that goes away. So I think that, that makes people a lot more productive and a lot more self-sufficient and in terms of having to pay for it well you know I think by just dealing with the issues and obviously there's always that risk libertarian me says okay you can always be misrun right by doing that but I think you reduce the bureaucracy so instead of having this wouldn't be single-payer insurance this would just be if you walk in to a hospital and you have your patient records and they know Mark Cuban walks in Mark Cuban's going to get health care if I go to the doctor I make an appointment they're gonna be health care now the hard part is on the back end making sure that we can do it efficiently and so if I had to make a choice between can we impact sorry, can we impact the government so we do these things efficiently or let people get sick and you know not be able to work because they're sick or someone in their family sick I'll deal with dealing with the bureaucracy so that's why I brought that up and I think all all this all the talk about Trump care versus Obamacare really just avoids the ultimate question was which is is health care right or not and I don't think you know so if you look at my pinkies they're a mess right because when I was playing rugby and basketball and they were popping in and out I couldn't afford insurance that stuff should not be covered right you know but other t you know I have friends that have had cancer we all know people who you know have had severe illnesses and if they didn't have insurance in a couple of cases I've since paid for them because they didn't have insurance you know or, or enough insurance then I think that's wrong right I, I think that's that's a cost we all should share you've probably heard a lot of you have to help them get out of here. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. You've probably heard a lot of Republicans say, look at the Veterans Administration and how they've run their hospitals. Right, so then you deal with the problem of how the, how, um, how the bureaucracy is run. So on one hand, you have the health of our fellow citizens. On the other hand, you're afraid to deal with bureaucracy. I'd rather deal with fixing their bureaucracy. That's the easy part to do. Right. If you need to go in there and, and do it the right way, then you go in there and do it the right way. You don't let people die or get sick simply because you're not capable of handling a bureaucracy. So if it's not, in your mind, single-payer insurance, how does it work when it's a private hospital? I mean, are, are you saying that there should be government-run, all government-run no, hospitals? Be, no, no, absolutely not. But it should be government paid for. So you know the taxes that we pay now the money that's being paid to insurance companies now the money that's being paid by employers who are self-insuring for all these things these are all the greatest risks that the insurance companies face and the greatest risk you know and I'm not just talking catastrophic risk but the greatest risks are what jacks up the price for everybody and so what I'm saying is if you get ill and you have um, heart disease realize you have and it's genetic right you had no say and it wasn't because you smoked or anything you go to the hospital you know, wherever you are, you, there's a record for you, right? Whatever your name is, here's your here's your history. Part of the give is that you give up a little bit of privacy because you're shared records, and you know, so that you can go to any hospital anytime. You make an appointment. Now, again, the flip side is, how do we get more doctors? Because if you get more doctors, there's 81,000 doctors in medical school at any one time, paying $50,000 a year on average, you know, to to go for med school. You know, when you add it all up, it's about $400 million a year. Make that $800 million a year, and all of a sudden, you can have another $100,000 of doctors, 100,000 doctors going to med school every year. That's going to help you deal with a backlog of patients. That's going to help you deal with pushing the cost down because there's so many more lawyers. So there's ways to solve the problems. Or there's ways to deal with the bureaucracy. But let's let's focus on dealing with the bureaucracy so, we, so the doctors can deal with taking care of people's health. I'd rather fight that battle and fight the nuance of what's chronic versus what's not chronic rather than just say, you know what, you're shit out of luck. 
and the big part of the problem is uh, the cost of services because sure. you're insured. How do you deal with that? Right? How do you deal with that? Right. But the one thing we know in this battle between Obamacare and transitioning to Trump Care, potentially transitioning to Trump Care, the three main stakeholders. There's the insurance insurers, there's the health care providers, and there's the patients, us, right, the citizenry. Who's going to take less? It wasn't like Obamacare has been there for 50 years, right? Pre-Obamacare, pre the insurance companies knew it was coming, right? They could have pushed rates down, but health care costs kept on going. And they sat at the table, and they played ball with the government and Congress, and they went along. Exactly right. And they're getting more customers than ever. Well, yeah, because people, they... They're, they're compelled to do so, right? And you know, and even the way Obamacare was handled, right? The, the, which is a whole nother, the three R's and, and, and dealing with all that. But the reality is, with changes in technology, the ability to evolve to government as a service, as a libertarian, I think we can reduce employment in government by at least a third, reduce the overhead and administration by as mu that much or more, so that we can offer more to services for for, for our citizens. And so if, if when it comes down to it, where I tend to disagree with everybody, and it, this is the libertarian in me, I, I'm happy to push down the size of government, and I'm happy to make work on making government more efficient, because then more money can pass through and help the people who need it. And that's what needs to change. Not because we can't manage government, let's not deal with the health care of our citizens. And you, I have one more for you, the Trump tax returns. Uh -huh. What was your reaction when you saw... Good returns? for him. Yeah, good for him. Like I said up there, if you made $150 million in a year, that's good no matter what. You know, now how much of it is cash, we don't know. But the interesting thing to me was, and I looked at him this morning, he had $22 million that he paid in um, as... Um, you have to anticipate what your next year's taxes are going to be, so you have to pay in. And he paid $22 million in in 2004 against his potential um, 2005, which means he made some decent money in 2004, too. But that's also the year he declared bankruptcy um, for the casino, So and he kind of swindled his shareholders. So I don't know if all this in 2004 and 2005 was a result of um, debt being forgiven, or stock shares that he sold, so it's hard to know for sure. Do you think he should be proactive and release some more years of his returns? Should do I think so? Yeah, of course. But you know, will he? Of course not. You know, for all we know, he's the one who leaked it because it was a good year for him. You never know. You never, you never know, know, right? I mean, yeah. So look, all that stuff is just—it's it, interesting, but it doesn't change who he is, one way or the other.